Hello everybody and welcome to Awesome Comics, your one-stop shop for everything comic book entertainment. I am your host, Walter Benaziak, and today it's a viewer's request. We're talking about our favorite DC animated movies. I cannot wait to get into this, but first, once again, I want to thank you guys for commenting and suggesting what you guys want us to talk about. Keep doing that, please. We will do as much as we can of what you guys suggest. And remember to up like this video, by the way. I don't say that enough. Let's get some up likes going, okay? Go ahead and like this video if you like the content. Okay, um, I want to make one announcement before we get started. Next week, we're going to be reviewing Captain America Civil War, and we're going to have two very special guests on the show, Mr. Doug Walker and Mr. Mr. Wa Rob Walker. You guys excited about that? Yes. Yes. We're going to have the Walker brothers on set. Team talk, Rob. Team Rob, Team Doug. It's going to be great. They're going to be talking Civil War with us next week, so make sure you come back next week for that. Okay, but this week, DC Animated Movies. There's a lot of really, really good ones, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. we are. And here to talk about it today, Miss Ayanna Wade. Hello. <laughs> and Mr. Brian Porter. What's up? Okay, everybody. Let's just jump right into this, okay? Ayana, you're first. What is your favorite DC animated movie? Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, Batman, Batman. Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, it's, such, it's such a really, really good animated film. Not even just for its time, but overall, it was considered one of the best superhero, if not just Batman, at least, movies until recently, I would sure. say. Uh, the score is phenomenal. I was, I had that in my notes too. Shirley Walker passed away, I think in like 2000 or something, but she's like an unsung hero of the animated series and of this movie. Yeah. She is great. Yeah, the score is fantastic. Yeah. It's Absolutely such a good amazing. score. Just the main, like, even just the title theme is just really good. I was reading somewhere that it's, uh, people's names backwards is, are the words that they're singing. Yeah, it yeah. is. Really? It was kind of yeah. a joke. It was, it was kind a, of a joke. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. That it, it's just the names backwards, which I think is really, really funny. It uh, is. And the animated style is really, really, really good. Um, it, I mean, I, if you're watching a lot of the, the more recent stuff, obviously, it's older animation style. Um, yeah, but it's got that, animation. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it's, it's got, got that got, art deco. Right, it's got a charm art. to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's really good old school Batman for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's animated series style. It takes place in the animated series universe, and it's, yeah. it's, I love the animation style as well. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce Tim was all over that with that yes. uh, animation style. So. Voice Absolutely. actors in it are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, we got Mark Hamill as the Joker. Woo! Uh, yeah, and Batman. if you're looking forward to Killing Joke, Maybe uh, watch Check this, this. Out. Yeah. if you yeah. haven't seen it. I, I know a lot of you have seen it. Right. Uh, but if you haven't, uh, Mark Hamill was uh, saying that uh, this is where he really figured out his Joker voice and laugh, and like this is like this specific one in this movie is uh, is the one that we hear now. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I mean, yeah even, uh, he's so devious in this movie. I mean, like Mark Hamill, he's just like so special as the Joker. I know. I mean, I love Heath Ledger. I love Jack Nicholson. I'm sure I'm going to like But this was after Jared Nicholson Leto. before Heath Ledger, so this was really taking a step in a different direction no, right. of his voice, which was kind of cool. You're absolutely right, yeah. but I mean, I think a lot of people just go automatically to live action versions yeah. of the Joker, but like, Hamill as a Joker is just so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> like, my favorite Joker so special. will forever be Mark Hamill's I Joker. Agree. Like, I, he does, you know, Nicholson or Heath Ledger, they don't beat Mark Hamill's Joker for me. He will right. be the best I forever. got you. Like, yeah, you know, we always talk about, you know, speaking of killing joke, um, backstory on the Joker, we kind of get a little bit of the backstory on this yeah, guy. Yeah, we see what he's up to before the bleach bath. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, how he draws the, the smile. smile. I love that. Yeah. I love that little touch. Bruce sees that this, picture and draws We definitely smile see on his some face. of um, Batman's de detectiveness in this, too. Absolutely. This is really good old school detective Batman as yeah. well, um, I, which I like. I did really like the first scene, like or the first time out as Batman, with just the. The ski mask right. and yeah. the shuriken. Fantastic. Like it's, I thought that was really awesome. It was very reminiscent of year one and year two, which is a lot of this was based on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was good. But overall, like for some reason, I just rewatched it. I could not get into the movie. I was. It's slower paced. Kind of bored. Yes. And Compared I just, to some of the other ones we're going to be talking about today, it's definitely a slower paced movie, but I don't think that makes it a bad movie. No, I, I, think, I didn't think it was bad. It's specifically just, for an it. animated film, but in superhero film in general, it really like packs a lot of complicated, like like character-driven story a lot inside of, of it. A lot Definitely of a lot. We really see Bruce's struggle with keeping his promise to his parents and right. then also wanting to actually find happiness in life. And 
And a lot of people think, you know, like Bruce kind of has like this vengeance idea, this vendetta, but we kind of see in this that it's really, it's it's not. It's There's the someone else. To, the yeah. Phantasm has more of a vendetta out. Phantasm is such a cool villain. Yeah. Can we talk His about the Phantasm too? a little bit? Oh, that, so That awesome. angel of death, that Your booming voice. I rewatched it even just on my laptop and uh, with my crappy little laptop speakers. Yeah. It's still like chilly. He's legit scary. Yeah. Like when you see him show up with the smoke and stuff at the beginning, yeah. just oh man. So really, in the graveyard, he was scary. Yes. Yeah. I really liked the phantasm, but with the reveal of who it actually was, I was just kind of underwhelmed. Okay, spoilers if you haven't seen yeah. it. Give you a second here. Mm. Okay, it's Andrea Beaumont. Right. Like uh, Bruce's first love, basically, that he was going to marry. I love that whole backstory stuff with, with yes. her and him. I mean, I think that's great. I think the you know the they reveal like first one. did like a Citizen fun. Kane vibe thing yeah. for the flashbacks and sort stuff, mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. And for for a film after the success of the animated series and everything, they really wanted to be able to like do like a story driven thing, but also be able to touch on things with death, with blood. And we see that in this, and it was there. PG. Yeah. Right. And so, hey, if Killing Joke is gonna be R and they were able to get this much story out of a PG, yeah. I think. Well, it was also the times too. It like, is, no it is. This uh, came out in 93. 93, it was way different yep. back right. in the Also, it wasn't originally supposed to come out no. in a theatrical release. It was, a, a it was originally video. supposed to be direct to video. Mm -hmm. yeah. and that was one of the reasons it was a flop, but it wasn't a flop. There was there wasn't enough critics that went to see it on uh, time. Right. They came out with like Saturday reviews, which no one reads really. Yeah. Um, but at for its time, it should have been able to do better. But it was a last minute decision um, to to do a theatrical release. I agree. I mean, in this, we you know we talk about the flashbacks and stuff. We get to see. Batman put on his cowl for the very first time, and you don't even see his face, you just see his eyes narrow, and, and how Alfred's Alfred reaction. is terrified yeah, of what's like, happening. That was great. Oh, so cool. So mm -hmm. the there flashbacks of, worked well. A lot of good points that I liked in the movie, but for overall, I was just kind of bored. I, I don't understand why you're bored. I don't either. Like, no, it was like, a fully formed story. I thought like the slow parts were kept my attention, even if it was slow, like it was building story. Right. There was a lot of character interaction that made sense with Bruce. I love Bruce at the his parents' grave at the big headstone and everything. I think all that's cool. I like Andrea Beaumont too. I mean, like she's not a fantastic character, I don't think, mm -hmm. I, but I think she's well-rounded enough where I, I would believe Bruce falling for this kind of right. girl and that he would give it all up to be happy and then it turns out to be another tragic thing in his past that pushes him towards being Batman. Right. Yeah. So that's really cool stuff, I think. I don't know, it's just really weird for me. Like, And it's weird because I love the animated series so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to me, it's like this was a good, it was a good movie, but there are animated series episodes that I liked even better. I oh thought no, were, I I, I like, agree were with a that. A lot better as a story in, sure. you know, well, in twenty minutes. Over th there are a lot of animated 16. series episodes, yeah. in my opinion, too, that are better than this movie. But this movie is great. It's a good movie. I just I just wasn't as engrossed as I would be on any like half of the show or half of the episodes How about from the half? show. I think there's like a handful. I don't know. There's Maybe like lot. a handful of episodes that are better than this, but um, that's for another time. Do you want to see us review Batman the Animated Series, talk about our favorite episodes? Because I would love we'll to that do that. Awesome. Yeah. If that's that would what you want to see, cool. leave, it, leave it in the comments. We would love to talk about Batman the Animated Series. My favorite, maybe my favorite TV show, period. So leave comments about that. Okay, there's more stuff to talk about, but we've got to move on, unfortunately. Um, okay, we'll go on to mine here. Mine is Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. This is the best Batman Beyond story, and it is a great way to end the main run of this show. Absolutely. But it also bookends Batman the Animated Series. This is all canon, folks. This oh, is yeah. canon of the DCAU. So we get to see like the last days of the Joker in this. We get to see uh, like what happened to Tim Drake is just mind blowing. You know, brutal. It's so brutal. brutal. It is demented, and it is great. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about just the emotion in this. I love Terry McGinnis. I know a lot of people. Are, are sort of so-so on Terry. I don't know why, he's a fantastic character. I, I, I love Terry McGinnis. I, I like him so much because he is so different from Batman. He is such a completely different character. He even mentions it in the movie, and yeah. it's so good. He's like, I'm not the same he's, Batman that right. you were. Yo. I'm not like your other kids. And right, he was, he was a, a bad kid. Like, I, I love all that stuff. So Terry is a great main character for this. Uh, when Joker comes back, Oh my God. Mark Hamill did a little bit of a darker Joker in this. I think that this is a little bit of a different uh, direction for him to take on it because he's a little bit older and he has a little bit of a deeper voice, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. what do you guys think of of Hamill's performance as a Joker and Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker? I like it. It was amazing. Yeah, like, we get a little so reprise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, everything he expanded everything on the original to to a T. Like it was great, and then he mm -hmm. added some a little bit new nuances to the Joker, and mm -hmm. it's just top notch. Like you cannot beat Mark Hamill's Joker. 
You can't. You definitely can't. Um, there's, you know, when he reappears to Bruce, you know, when Bruce sees him for the first time, old man Bruce Wayne sees this, mm, yeah. this Joker, like, reappear right in front of him, and it's it's just, like, you could see in his eyes, like, the shock and all. Uh, yeah. He tells Terry, like, no, you're done. You you can't go up against right. this guy because of how awful he is. And he's like, I'm right. not going to lose another one of my soldiers. Right. You know? right. I, but he's being so Bruce Wayne in this. He's being very stern about it, and he's very unapologetic. You know, stupid kid, you don't know what you want. Yeah. None of you ever did. That's a great line. Yeah. And I think their relationship makes this thing and the show too work very well. The old man Bruce Wayne is such a cool, like different take on the character too. I'd love to see a live action Batman Beyond movie eventually. We just get oh, Kevin yeah. Conroy just as Kevin, old man. Put Bruce some, Wayne. some like, old perfect. man makeup on him. It would be freaking <laughs> awesome. Please do that eventually. I want to see amazing. something. I want to see something like that. I think maybe one of the best scenes period in the DCAU is is this scene when the Joker shows like the home movies of how he tortured oh, Robin and, God, and yes. got out of him who Bruce was and all the secrets and everything. So emotionally heavy. Um, and then there's the line, I'll just read it. Behind all the strum and batterings, you're just a little boy in a play suit crying for mommy and daddy. Oh, it would man, be funny if it weren't so pathetic. Oh, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. That's great stuff. Yeah. Great line from Mark Hamill's Joker. And then Bruce basically goes crazy on him right. after that. It, it's, it's a you great scene. You really see scene. the mental hold that Joker has on Batman yeah, in this in general, definitely. though. Yeah, the and how Joker and Harley are able to like manipulate exactly the right people to mm -hmm. get to him. Mm -hmm. The Absolutely. emotional tone of that uh, whole movie, I think, was best... Uh, like portrayed or whatever in that flashback scene. I mean, mm -hmm. later with the you know final battle or whatever, like nothing beats that flashback scene and the emotional tone yeah, and the overall great. craziness of it. I think it was it was that was the best part of the entire movie. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I think it's it's the best DC animated like uh, universe movie. Like it's freaking fantastic, and it ties into Batman Beyond and Batman the original animated series so well. So check this one out if you haven't. It is fantastic. And we're going to go on to Mr. Porter's pick. What this is yours? This was very hard because Batman uh, Beyond Return of the Joker was Maybe. like up my favorite up until this movie. And then just thinking about the two of them, it's like, how do I pick? But for me, ultimately, it's going to be uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. It's great. Mm -hmm. I okay. love that story so much. And one of the reasons why I love it just generally was because it doesn't have Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill and all them. Like... They, nobody can touch them, nobody can be better than them. They will always be the best. But for Bruce Greenwood oh, yeah. and um, uh, Joe DiMaggio and Jensen Ackles. John DiMaggio. John DiMaggio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe DiMaggio, the New York Yankees. So yeah, my bad. Uh, John DiMaggio, uh, like, that Joker was an awesome take on the Joker, but it Definitely. still felt so much like the Joker. Very mm -hmm. different. Take, yeah. Sort of darker. Yeah. Um, just a little I, bit was, more no-nonsense, but I yeah. think a little bit like more unhinged, maybe, than Hamill's yeah, Joker. Yeah, definitely. And I just loved his voice. I loved his laugh. And then Bruce Greenwood is definitely my number two He's voice a actor really good Batman. Batman. He really sounds good. great. He's way better than, um, what's the new one they got out now? Uh, Jason O'Malley or Jason something? Jason O'Mara. O'Mara, right. Uh, I, I like him way better than that, but... Um, because this movie holds its own so much with this new uh, voice cast mm -hmm. is a big reason why I like it so much because it it toe to toe with anything Hamill and uh, Conroy and I think that's great. It is and then great Jensen movie. Ackles is awesome as the great. Red Hood. Red Hood yeah. The Red Hood is such an awesome character. You got Jason Todd. You got uh, from you know 1980s. A death in the family, how brutal that was, the 900 number where the fans got to choose whether he lived or died, and we, we killed him, and it was, we didn't see we him killed for him. 20 years. And it's, oh man, it was so good. Judd Winnick wrote the movie, he yeah. wrote Batman Under the Hood, the original graphic novel, and it's just so good. It's an awesome story for uh, the continuation of Jason Todd's character, and yeah. how different he is from any other Robin we had, and what happens, like just... Bruce says that he picked him up because he was so different from Dick, and um, he wanted to he, save him. He kind wanted of to save him. He could see what type of path he would go down, mm -hmm. and I think this is the culmination of that path. But even worse, because of Batman's influence, now he's—I mean, he's so he's much dangerous. He, he's dangerous. He's—he's he's a murderer, and he, mm -hmm. he takes those skills that he learned from Batman mm -hmm. and uses it for evil. And it's—and it's awesome. And it's an awesome what if. Like, what if Batman went bad? Red Hood. Right. And, and basically, and it, it works so well. And and it goes back to uh, my favorite the emotional scene of this whole movie was the end when he's got the Joker and he's got the gun on Batman. He's like, why? Why? 
is he still alive? Right. right. You know, all the you know people he's tormented, like the friends he's crippled. Perfect. Nice shout out to ba uh, Barbara Gordon. Yeah. Like that whole scene emotionally was awesome. Yeah. Right. And he's like, I, if he had taken you away from me, there was nothing I could have done that, like, or would have done this. You now, you know, uh, kill him or whatever. Like, oh, it's such a good thing. He's like. Uh, it'd been too, uh, Batman's like it'd be too damned easy to go down that route. I right, would never and once you start, never come yeah. back, yeah. And he's like, I'm not talking about killing Penguin or Dent. He's like, just him. And there's so much emotion. I agree. He loved Batman, and just he couldn't. He even couldn't saves him. him. There's that fight with those guys dressed up and whatever. I, I'm not sure who those guys are. Yeah, it was the fearsome the, hand of four. First man of four, and like, and Jason saves Batman. Yeah, he's like, look out, and he, right. and he takes that thing. So like, you could say he still really cares about him. And yeah. it's just such an emotionally complex character, mm -hmm. and just how. The Lazarus Pit messed with his mind. It's like but you don't did, know that, how that's much. That's the thing, though. We don't yeah. know. Is, did it really affect him that much, or was this all him from the beginning? Inside, right? yeah. they, they, asked, like, they asked that question. In the if movie. you look at it from a uh, like from a psychology standpoint, like he was a kid, and then he dies, and then he comes back, and he has none of those formative years to to mm -hmm. actually become an adult, and so right. he becomes an adult with the mindset of a child who is incredibly deadly. What do you guys think of the the flashbacks with showing young? Uh, Jason Todd with, with Bruce and stuff. That's, so I, think, I actually really right like specifically the alley scene where like we see him with the car and then right and then we see him present day. Mm -hmm. I I specifically I love, love the visual of like that part in the alley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the cutbacks and like how he kind of narrates his time with Jason and what he saw and all that stuff. Like. Oh, it was so good. It was yeah. one of the best ways to do uh, flashbacks or whatever. Yep. The, the final flashback scene where he get, he's the first time he's in the Robin costume and he's like, uh. you know, come on, old man, there's some bad guys we got to, you know, oh. take or uh, whatever. And he's like, this is the greatest day of my life. Yeah. Seriously. Hurts. Misty. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. single time. No I matter agree, how many man. times I watch it, I will. It, it is right in the heartstring. It's by far my, my most favorite. Although, killing joke. We'll see about we'll that. See. We're going to see. I'm we'll excited, see about man. that. Do you want to see us do a whole episode of Killing Joke? We're probably going to do it anyway. So leave a <laughs> comment and let <laughs> us know. Bad. Hey guys, it's Heather. I'm here at Amazing Fantasy Books and Comics in Crown Point, Indiana. And we're going to go ask some people what their favorite DC animated movie is. So let's go. This is possibly the creepiest piece of memorabilia I have ever seen. I don't know why you'd want to make a mask of the Joker's literal rotting flesh, um, but apparently you can have it. Not creepy at all. All right, I'm here with Mark, who is also apparently a real ghostbuster. Can we, can we talk about the proton pack uh, for a second first here? Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, well, it's just, this one is based off of the end of the movie. It's a stunt pack, so it's made out of uh, lightweight EVA foam. It's roughly about 10 pounds. It's got the static lights. Well, it looks fantastic, but we have another important question for you. Um, what is your favorite DC animated movie? I would have to say New Frontier. Big fan of Darwin Cook's. The storyline itself is just, it's amazing to see what could have happened if the comics code didn't implode the industry. Um, the artwork, like I said, it's just, it's beautiful. And you gotta admit, when Batman walks up to Martian Manhunter and says, I, ha I spent, you know, $80,000 on a piece of meteor sliver. For you, I just need a penny for a book of matches to stop you. You gotta give it up. So have you seen the trailer at all for Killing Joe? Yes, I have. Are you excited or? It's been waiting forever, you know, Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy doing an R-rated Batman movie. How can you not be excited that they are Batman and Joker? So do you think it's a good thing that it has an R rating to it? Of course it is. It's about time. That was the whole purpose of DC doing the animated features direct to video was so that they could do R rated PG-13 movies. It's just taken them a long time to get to that point. Now if they could step up and go from Batman to like say Green Lantern with Blackest Night or even Kingdom Come, that would be awesome. So if you come check us out on May 7th, it's free comic book day, which everyone knows. It's going to be huge. We're going to have a bunch of cosplayers. We're going to have giveaways. Every year it gets bigger and bigger. Last year we had a line out the door that went three, uh, three storefronts down. So we're hoping this year it'll be even bigger. 
Personally, my favorite DC animated movie is Under the Red Hood. It has a fantastic story, great characters, and I love the animation style. So I really hope at least one of you picked it. Uh, this has been Heather at Amazing Fantasy Books and Comics in Crown Point, Indiana. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> right now we're gonna go into our picks of the week and they tie into our individual movies. Let's go with Ayana first. So mine, I'm going into the, the digital realm this week. Do you read comic books physically or do you get them on your apps? Let me know. I'm interested to hear what your favorite way is. My pick is uh, Batman Adventures. Um, which is based off the animated series as well. And uh, issue number seven is Phantasm Strikes, which uh, ties into my movie definitely. And bonus, we get a little Batgirl action. Who I, want a little Batgirl action? I love a little Batgirl action. I love a lot of Batgirl action. <laughs> uh, I really, right. I really super like uh, that we get some Phantasm in there again. And also we get it to see a little bit of Batman and Batgirl at the end that's kind of the trust that Batman has to have in Batgirl because he's trained Robins and everything for a while and he sort of doesn't really know Barbara's background and sort of has to have a lot of faith in her as a sidekick and it's really, I really like their relationship in this issue specifically. It's a good issue, check it out. And actually the whole Batman Adventures series is really fun. There's some good uh, Robin bits in there as well, so you should check that out. Cool stuff. Porter, what did you pick? I picked uh, Batman Hush specifically because towards the end of the book, we see Jason Todd as Robin come back from the dead. This is, this is the first appearance of Jason Todd back from the dead. Uh, it was retconned later by uh, Judd Winnick yeah. and visually it is awesome. Uh, Jim Lee, the drawing on this is perfect and it's an awesome story and it's a great, awesome kind of tie in towards the, how this story ends. The book itself is amazing, you need to pick it up, and just not even just for Red Hood, um, this whole book is, is one of the best Batman stories ever. So, Batman Hush, pick it up, awesome. It is a great book, I can attest to that. Okay, we're for Return of the Joker, I wanted to pick something a little bit different, so I didn't go with the Batman Beyond book, I actually went with Brian Azzarello's Joker book from a few years back. This has got a lot of buzz when it came out. It kind of has a little bit of a Heath Ledger vibe to him. Like Joker has like the scars on the sides of his cheeks and stuff like that. Uh, Lee Bermaggio, I think is uh, how you pronounce his last name. He does some really good art in here. Um, just see a little bit of it right there. It's got really like down and gr uh, dirty kind of kind of stuff. He also switches to like more realistic type of sort of almost watercolor painting type stuff. Not, not to the point of Alex Ross, but still some, some really good realistic type art in here. So it's a really good look inside of the Joker. So it kind of ties into Return of the Joker where you could see uh, his thought process a little bit better. But okay, those are our picks of the week, our comic book picks of the week because those are comic books and we just talked about them and you <laughs> saw us talk about them. So thanks a lot, we really appreciate it. Okay, next week folks, we're gonna be talking about Captain America Civil War. I can't wait. So excited. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have Doug and Rob Walker here. The Walker brothers will join us. Their sibling rivalry will combine with awesome comics to give you a really amazing review of a great movie. I'm sure it's gonna be. I'm really excited for it. Okay, so for you guys, where can we find on the social medias? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'll be right here for you. Oh, so convenient. Oh, she's always there for you guys. Always right here. Always. Porter? Facebook.com slash awesome porter. Uh, just talk about some stuff from the show, general musings on stuff, so just look me up. All right, I am on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter. Uh, I put up basically whatever I want. Um, I try to put up some stuff about, you know, like news for animated movies and stuff. I've been talking about The Killing Joke on there a lot. So if you're interested in my thoughts on that, go ahead and check that out until we talk about it on the show. So until next time, for these two lovely people here, I am Walter Bernasiak, and we will see you next week on the next page.